We told them that they're going to have to spend the day without the one thing that they think makes them beautiful. What they didn't know is that they were going to be spending the day in an H&M storefront window on one of Manhattan's busiest corners. Oh my gosh, look at Oh my god. Merlin immediately runs away in fear. You guys are not playing me in a... <laughs> Let's go. No. Let's go, girl. With the help of Nicole and Stephanie, she finds the courage to face the storefront window. The thing they find most ugly about themselves is now on display for all the world to see. I don't think people should see me like this. Can I have my makeup? The girls can't get over all the negative comments they think the world sees. I feel like I need my bronzer right now. I need my tan skin. I need my tan face. She can't even tell if I'm a man or a woman, you know? She probably thinks I'm a transvestite. Oh my god, that guy just said, why is that ugly girl in the window? She's putting in my scarf. I think that she's saying how ugly I look. As a bystander points to Merlan's hair. Can we please get out of here? Her biggest fear becoming a reality is too much to handle. Those girls are saying that I have no hair and they're saying how ugly I am. <laughs> and when a group of women start looking at Stephanie's face, she can't believe what she thinks she hears. That girl is talking about my skin. I just know she is. And Nicole feels as though everyone is talking about her pale skin. I know that girl's saying I look sickly. Pushed to the breaking point. Get me out of here. Stephanie leaves the window. <laughs> I don't like my face. Stephanie, you left. It was hurting that much, you left. So how did you feel? Did you feel naked? Exposed? Extremely exposed. Like, they were all staring at my scars. They were all looking at what's wrong with me. I didn't have that smooth and radiant look that everybody else had. I, I, I thought you looked the same. Did you guys? I couldn't really tell much difference. I, I saw, like, less eyeliner and stuff, but I didn't... I didn't see a bunch of scars. So I, I find it interesting because I think a lot of it is in your head. And a lot of the times we, we are always the person when we were the most insecure. A lot of the times it's when we're, uh, you know, a, a, a child. And I know this happened when you were young. And I feel like that's living inside of you. And hopefully today we can, we can strip that. Um, we're going to find out what the people looking in the window at these ladies really were saying. I want to know if they were talking about your scars that you say you see. Check this out. Are the girls' perceptions of what the people on the street said about them correct? Oh my God, that guy just said, why is that ugly girl in the window? She's putting up my scars. I think that she's saying how ugly I look. Heck no. They're beautiful ladies. All three girls look fierce. Oh yes, yes, they're all they're pretty, all yes. Gorgeous. You're beautiful. So, does anyone notice Merlan's lack of a weave? Not a soul. Nice legs, nice figure. Gorgeous, tall, slender, like, be a model. She looks like Michelle Obama's little sister. <laughs> the crowd certainly does not miss Stephanie's makeup. It's very cute, she's tiny. I would love to see her skin and her beautiful lips. She has a pretty face, she has great hair. And not a single person commented on Nicole not being tan. She reminds me of a ballerina. She has very nice legs. Awesome legs, awesome body, I love her. And the one thing that all New Yorkers agree with is that it's all about letting your inner beauty shine through. They're gorgeous. They need to see what we see in them. You know, it's what's inside and how you carry yourself. Yeah, if I were straight, I'd ask all three That's them. right. Oh. <laughs> what are you thinking, Stephanie, when you said that? I saw your face what? like... What are they talking about? What are they talking about? Do you think they're crazy? Yes, I do. So they, that's what they saw. And I, it's, it's crazy that you can't see your beautiful cheekbones that I really can't see with your weave. Oh. Like when she had her hair back, she had those like top model cheekbones. Merlin, do you think that you could let Tina and Tyra and <laughs> Leslie kind of just sit in the shelf for a little bit? Maybe not Tyra. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just not on a wide scale like we did. Yeah, I mean, but that's but, just an, an experiment to, yeah. you know, an extreme to show mm -hmm. you something. One thing is, um, y'all know I wear weaves and I wear wigs all the time, a, a lot of the time. 
Um, but there's a lot of the time where I wear my natural hair and I'll wear it in cornrows. There's this picture of me with Mr. and Miss J and we're all posing really fierce and I have these cornrows and I feel like I'm fly that way. And I think it's about options. You know, it's about options. Makeup, no makeup, fake tan, no tan, weave, no weave. I think it's all beautiful. I think when we use it as a crutch, that's the part when it gets debilitating. So I hope that you guys can walk away from this and feel beauty without those crutches. That it's not a crutch, it's an enhancement, but not something that you necessarily need. We'll be right back. Up next, tell me what you feel when you look in the mirror. Before my accident, I was that popular, beautiful girl. And now I just see like, a big red scar on my face. I want to capture the beauty of your scar in a photo. I have my glam squad here from America's Next Top Model. And later. How do you rate yourself on a scale of 1 to 10? I'm more like a 20. Absolutely a 12. I love everything about me from head to toe. Everybody talking about ugly, ugly, ugly on the outside. I see ugly on the inside in all of you guys. today's show because we're asking people to try to accept the things that they, that they see as physical flaws and I want them to really see them as something to celebrate because they make them unique. Now joining us now is Amanda and she says she struggles with what she sees in the mirror every single day. So tell me when you look in the mirror, tell me what you feel when you look in the mirror. It's hard for me to look in the mirror because before my accident I was that popular, beautiful, you know, shining girl. And now I just see like a big red scar on my face. And my smile, I don't have that beautiful smile like a, a beautiful person will. Tell me how, um, what happened? Um, it was the summer when I was nine years old. My friends came over with a bike. So we went bike riding. And I lived on a steep hill. I went down the hill and I was flying through a window. That's what you remember, flying through a window. Flying through a window. Ever since, like, at that point, I went unconscious. But what my mother told me was my face was so split in half that you could fit a fist in it. Inside of your face? Inside of my face. I was in the hospital for three weeks. The first week, I was in a coma and paralyzed. And I remember waking up to a priest praying over me like if I was dead already. He thought you were going to die? He, was, he thought I was going to he die. He thought you were going to die. You said that you remember glass. What was it? Glass from a car? Glass, glass from a house? Glass from the windshield of the car. Of a car? Of the car. Was it a moving car? Yes. It was a moving car. Okay. So you would go to school Mm -hmm. And the kids, of course, would stare because that's what kids do. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought my friends were going to always be my friends. They stopped talking to me. Mm -hmm. They started making fun of me. You know, I got the nickname Scarface. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was only 10 years old then. Mm -hmm. So what a 10-year-old is supposed to do mm -hmm. when she's in that situation? Um, tell me about the surgeries. How many surgeries have you had? I lost count. I know I had more than 25 surgeries. More than 25, mm -hmm. and you still have some more to go. I have a lot more to go. Take me back to the first time you saw your face after the accident, after you came out of the coma. I understand everybody had sheets on all of the, the mirrors at first. That's, right. It's funny because when I saw myself, it was in a reflection. And I'm like, I started crying. I'm like, who's this girl? She's swollen. She looks ugly. And when I went back to my room, I just started crying mm -hmm. and crying and crying because I know that's not the girl I knew. Mm -hmm. That's not the man that I knew. And I demanded, I want everything covered. I want all the mirrors covered. I want any reflection I see covered. Mm -hmm. I want everything covered. I don't want to see this girl. So when you look in the mirror, you see unattractive. You see bad. You see your scar before you see anything else. From the mirror, yes. Yeah. What about taking pictures? Do you ever take pictures? 
Before my accident, I used to run in front of pictures. I was the girl who let me shine. I wanted that. Mm -hmm. Now I run away from it. Mm -hmm. I run away from it because I'm scared. Or if not, I'm on my good side. That's why I say I'm on my good side. I think both of your sides are good, Amanda. Thank you. I think both of your sides are beautiful. And there's one thing, and I talked